They asked if you'd love doing your job. Yes, it's, uh, it's wonderful to, to work in space. Uh, ever since I saw Apollo 11, the lunar landing, when I was five years old, I always longed for uh, going to space and work. And uh, here a dream came true. I uh, had to study hard and work hard. But I'm so uh, happy to be here, and I'm love, loving uh, living here and working with so many uh, wonderful people here. Uh, the, uh, how, just a couple of logistical questions. How, how long did it take from the time of launch? How long did it get, uh, the, does it take to get to the space station? Uh, well, Mr. President, uh, let me answer that in two uh uh, two ways. First of all, it takes us about eight and a half minutes to get to orbit, and at that time we're we're going 17,500 miles an hour. But we're in a bit of a tail chase with the space station, and it's approximately about a day and a half to two days later that we actually rejoin with the space station. Okay, so eight minutes just to get into orbit, but then you've got to basically try to to catch up with the space station uh, and match up so that you can uh, you can lock in. Sure, that's exactly right. Okay. Anybody have any more questions? Hold on one second. What's your favorite or the most interesting experiment you're working on up at the space station? Okay. Do you guys have a favorite experiment right now? That's a really tough question because they're all interesting in different ways. Uh, Mike and I were doing a flame experiment where we were trying to, to help the scientists on the ground understand how fire behaves up here. There's all kinds of reasons for that. So that was interesting because it's sort of an unusual environment to intentionally put a fire. Um, I think one of the ones I like the most is an experiment that we're doing on ourselves to try and understand how our nutritional state changes and our biochemistry changes. And that'll help us design food and understand a little bit more about the process processes that the human body undergoes. That's probably my favorite one. But there's all kinds of interesting things in all of the experiments. Now, can I ask you a question? Uh, the, the, were you tempted to uh, cut your hair shorter while you were up there? Uh, or do you, uh, is it fun and weightless? Well, that's a really good question because it is a little bit of an overhead to take care of long hair here. Um, I think, you know, ideally a, a short haircut's the way to go, but quite frankly on me it wouldn't be so nice, so I kept it long. I, I think it's a real fashion statement. <laughs> Hold on one second. We've got, uh, we've got another young man back here. How much spare time do you have on the day? In the day. How much? How much spare time do you have? It, it sounds like you guys are, are are pretty busy. They do keep us pretty busy up here, and uh, we have a very tight schedule that starts from the moment you wake up until the moment you go to sleep. Uh, but they give us a little bit of time in the morning to uh, to get yourself ready, get yourself cleaned up, have some breakfast and the same in the evening, so we can use that time to either call down to our family and friends or maybe even check our email and see how things are going back on Earth. Now, that, that's interesting. Does, uh, does email uh, work pretty much the same between the space station uh, and uh, computers here on Earth? Mr. President, uh, as, uh, as uh, just about everybody uh, on the planet knows, is that uh, email is a pretty important way for us to keep in touch with each other. Uh, even though we're really far away and traveling really fast, uh, we still use email also. Unfortunately, we only synchronize our emails uh, once or twice a day, sometimes three times a day. So it's not as fast and instantaneous as we are used to on the ground. But even so, it's a really useful way to, to get in touch with uh, other people. In addition, we have uh, uh, kind of an internet over uh, voice over internet protocol telephone, so it's really nice that we can get a chance to talk to our families, uh, not 24-7, but uh, when we do have good satellite coverage, we do get the chance to call home. And that, uh, for those of us who stay up for a long time, that's uh, what's really, really important to us. Excellent. 
All right. Well, I know that uh, you guys probably have a whole bunch of stuff to do, uh, but I, I think that uh, we may have uh, one more question from uh, a member of Congress. Hold on one second. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Suzanne Cosmas, and I actually represent Central Florida, the area that includes the uh, Kennedy Space Center. So I want to first thank you on behalf of all Americans for your service to us and uh, for wh what you represent in terms of America and our supremacy in space exploration, um, along with our international partners and for what you're doing there at the International Space Station. I had the honor of being at the uh, Kennedy Space Center last week when you took off, and it was a fabulous, ab absolutely fantastic launch. And um, we, uh, so I wished you adieu from there, and now I'm wishing you hello from here. Um, I want to thank you again for your service and tell you how excited I am to be representing the Kennedy Space Station in that area, but also for what you do that inspires people to be interested in the science and technology that has led us to this uh, pioneering place where you are. And um, the things that we anticipate that we will be able to reap from uh, your service, um, I'm very thrilled about, particularly uh, the idea, as the President has said, of alternative energies and the fact that you're using solar panels panels in space, what we're hoping in the long run that you will be able to, from space, use solar energy to come back to Earth. And um, again, I'm thrilled to be here and very excited to have the opportunity to, to talk to you. And um, thank you so much for your service to our country. Well, I think that... Uh, Thank you, ma'am. We, uh, we appreciate that. And uh, each one of us here is very lucky and honored to be right where we're at uh, here today. So the honor is all ours. We're honored to be here doing this, this, this great work. Well, I think all of us echo the sentiment. Uh, we are extraordinarily proud of you. We're so grateful that you took the time to, to speak to all of us. I know these young people uh, are, are pretty excited to be on a direct link with uh, astronauts in space. So... Uh, does everybody want to say goodbye? Goodbye. All right. They they all they're all beaming, and and we appreciate you guys. So uh, look forward to seeing you when you're back on the ground. God bless you. Thank you, Mr. President. On uh, behalf of the uh, Space Shuttle Discovery crew here in the dark blue shirts, I uh, want to say we're very honored that you spent uh, some time with us today. Uh, it meant a lot to us. We thank you very much, and from, uh, from one Chicago guy to another, I wish you well, sir. And uh, for the closing comments, I'll pass the microphone off to uh, Commander Mike Fink, the commander of the International Space Station. Thank you. And Mr. President, I'm not from Chicago. I'm sorry about that. But uh, my crew and I were, uh, are really happy to have a chance to talk to you and uh, share our adventure uh, with even more people. It's uh, pretty impressive what human beings can do when we work together constructively and not destructively. And that's the mission of the International Space Station. So thanks for joining us. Thanks for flying with us at 17,500 miles an hour today. And uh, we sure we're glad to have a chance to share it with you and uh, the, the distinguished members from, from Congress as well as all the kids out there. So, everybody, thanks again for joining us. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. And Discovery ISS, this is Houston. That concludes the event. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Discovery ISS, we are now resuming operational space-to-ground communications.